Hi guys, I've made this chocolate bunny to celebrate Easter and today I'm going to teach you how to make this cake that I've entered into a challenge on a new social network for bakers called We Bake. The community challenge that I'm taking part in is called Beat the Baker and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's see if we can beat the baker with this creation. You can have a go too. Bake your best, most original chocolate cake and enter it on the website. If it's deemed to beat the expert bakers, you'll be in with a chance to win some great prizes and even a trip to Belgium. For this cake, we're going to bake a chocolate orange cake and an orange cake and we're going to layer them up and create a bunny rabbit shape. For the full recipe for this cake, if you head over to my profile on the We Bake website and you can find all the ingredients and the method on there that I've used. As you'll see from my recipe, it's all about using chocolate in this creation. Follow my step-by-step -step tutorial, show off your skills and beat the baker. With my chocolate cake, I'm just going to add all the dry ingredients to a bowl. Then we'll give it a mix. Oh, I'm getting it everywhere. So I've melted my butter. And to that I'm going to add some buttermilk, my eggs and also my orange extract. We're going to add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and then give them a mix. You can also add orange zest as well at this point. So I've baked three chocolate cakes into rectangular shapes. I've also baked two orange sponges and I've also created like an orange jelly so it's like a Jaffa sort of layer to go in between. Also made up some chocolate ganache using the dark chocolate and double cream. And I've got some greaseproof paper that I'm just going to layer my cakes upon to. And I've started with a layer of chocolate ganache before adding my first sponge cake. It will come off the greaseproof paper later. And I'm adding layers of ganache I haven't worried about going to the very corners because I'm going to cut these corners off when I shape the cake. So you want a reasonably soft ganache for in between the layers. Add the little orange piece and now we'll continue layering up. Now I've kept layering mine up till it's about six inches tall altogether. A little bit like that. Now don't worry if it's a bit scruffy at the edges, we're going to cut around this. So, so I've drawn the rough line where I want it to go. So at the front I've got a little curve coming down to a little foot which will be a little bump at the front and then at the back we've got a slightly bigger curve that's going to come round to the bump and I'm going to cut that front bit off first then we're going to work on the back so I'm cutting like a curve down onto the back now the cake can be quite crumbly so just be careful when you're cutting it and just because it's moving around a little bit I'm going to start adding a bit of ganache just to the back just to hold it in place take a little bit more off these back corners so this is like the bum area at the moment that I'm shaping. Take a little bit off the top at each side. So back at the front, I'm cutting like a little corner off either side. So it leaves me with a little bit stuck out at the front, which will become the legs. And I'm going to take a little bit more off the sides. Don't go too far down at the back. Cut a little piece there out of the middle. Leaving, you see this chunky bit here, which will be the top of the back leg. Just round it off a little bit, trying to get rid of any square edges. And then we're going to fully cover this in ganache. Just going to take a little bit more out the front. So we've ganached the back, like a V at the front, leave a bigger bit for the chest. And then we're going to take a small bit out between the two front legs like that. So once we've got that shape, we can then finish covering the whole thing in ganache. So I'm going to push in two white plastic cake dowels. They're a little bit taller than my cake, so they're going to stick out a bit at the top. We're going to attach the head to that. So for the head, I've melted some marshmallows, mixed in some Rice Krispies. Let them cool slightly, but not too much for this set. So they're cool enough that I can handle them now. I'm going to squeeze that into a teardrop shape for my rabbit's head and then what I'm going to do is push my thumbs in to create two eye holes. I'm just going to put a small amount of the Rice Krispies onto like the top of the body around these sticks so it's got a little bit of a neck and then just make sure your head started to firm up a little bit and we're going to push this onto the plastic cake dolls and then we're going to cover the head completely in chocolate ganache and I'm just going to add a few more defined features before we ice him or her. So it's just pieces of fondant that we're adding for the nose and cheeks. And I'm just cutting out a little bit at either side 
of the head just past the eyes to give it a bit more shape. And I'm gonna cut the whole thing in ready to roll icing. And I've just dyed the icing in grey. Roll it out reasonably thin. Now, it's not quite big enough to fully cover the rabbit, but that's fine, because we're gonna do it in pieces. So to start with, we want to really cover the back and the legs. So push it on nice and tight, give it a bit of a rub with your hands. And cut off all the extra around the bottom. I'm just going to press in a little bit with a modelling tool or with your fingers. So you need to push into all the little lines and dints in your cake. Before the fondant has time to dry, I want to make it look a little bit more fur-like. I'm just using a cake tool. It's just a Dresden tool that I've got here. You can use a cocktail stick or even a knife. I'm going to put in lots of hair lines with this onto the toes. Again, just run through and add little hair lines. So you'll see I've added a piece of white fondant to the rabbit's chest. So I've just added that just to above those front legs. Then I'm also adding more grey fondant now covering the front legs themselves and just trim it off where it meets your other piece of fondant at the back of the leg. I'm just blending it in with my finger. I'm not too worried if there's a little seam because I'm going to add fur lines over that as well. So we're going to do the same with the front legs as the back where we're adding a bit of white to the ends of the toes. You can use whatever colour you want, you don't have to go for grey and white. And then we're going to add in some more lines for fur. So while I'm adding these lines for fur, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about We Bake. So We Bake is a community that celebrates baking but also motivates bakers to do more of what they love. Imagine a mix between Facebook and Instagram but with 100% baking content so bakers of any level can create a profile and they can connect with others and share their creations. The community also offers lots of advice and fun inspiration as well as some great prizes from the competitions run. So it's worth having a look on there. So I've covered it fully in the lines for first so I'm going to move on to the head. Again just more grey fondant rolled out, we're going to cover that head. I'm going to get some creases here so I'll pinch them tight and then we'll trim them off and then we'll push together to try and get rid of that seam a little bit. Again if you're left with a bit of a line don't worry too much because we're going to add more lines over the top of that for the fur anyway. So we're going to trim all the bottom off from around sort of the neck area. Again rub it into the body part of the fondant. I'm going to push in a little bit deeper in the eye sockets. I'm just using a balling tool and then we'll try and pull that eye sockets off slightly pointed towards the nose and then you just want a white ball of fondant in each eye and then I've got another ball, just a small ball of white fondant it's just going to go under the chin again some more little fur lines on there I'm going to press a little bit deeper in the nose and again we're going to fully cover the head now in little lines of fur to keep them smaller around the nose and you can make them a little bit longer and deeper as you get further up the head and then I'm also for the eyes, I'm going to give our rabbit blue eyes. I know they don't really have blue eyes in real life, but I thought it would look pretty. So in each eye I've got a circle of blue, a smaller circle of black, and then an even smaller circle of white. And I'm just going to use a bit of food colouring to just paint a ring of a deeper blue just on the very edge of the blue that I've put in the eye. I'm going to roll some black fondant, nice and thin. Just a small piece, it's got a little point on either end. And that's just going to run along the top of each eye. So my rabbit looks a bit more ladylike now. If you want more eyelashes, just roll out some tiny little triangles of black again. Just stick them onto that line that you've just added. You can give her some rosy cheeks and a little bit of pink dust on the nose. So it's just edible food dusts, these ones. And a big ball of white fondant on for the tail. And just squish that around until you're happy with the shape and you want to get some big deep lines in there for the fur. just ears to add now. So I've got my remaining sort of grey fondant that I had left over and I've added a bit of Tylos powder to it so that it firms up a little bit because we don't want them flopping around too much. I've also got a little bit of pale pink for the middle of each ear so I've rolled them roughly into kind of oval shapes then tried to point the ends a little bit and put the pink within the grey. Just put a few fur lines in and then we'll stick that onto the head. So I'm going to give mine one ear down and one up 
So for the one that's up, it's going to struggle to stand up on its own. So I've inserted a couple of pieces of spaghetti into the rabbit's head and then we'll try and push the ear onto that spaghetti. Just give it a good press down at the back of the head. And if you want to add any more detail, you can run over it with a bit of grey or black edible food colour in the dust, just with a dry brush, just in any areas that you want to look a little bit darker. So I'm going to catch the nose area and the tips of the ears. I'm going to catch in between sort of the legs, any creases where it will be a bit more shadowed. And then we'll just give her a little purple bow just to finish her off. There she is, all finished, ready for Easter. Don't forget I've posted this recipe over on my We Bake profile so that you can make it too. Become a We Bake member and don't forget to enter the Beat the Baker challenge where you'll be in for a chance to win a trip to Belgium. So just to finish it off now, I've iced a board in green fondant, put a little bit of chocolate ganache on there and I've just lifted my cake and placed her on top. There she is all finished. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.